Hey everybody, welcome to the Pistrano Show. Today we will be talking about this version of my Creighton 6S builds. Now if you remember in the last video, I said that I'm doing two now. I'm doing the Basher and I'm doing the Shower. Um, so I've put this one back to stock um, as much as possible. And I've got a few things that I need to do. And I got some parts in today. I got these are the wheel extensions. And I'll show how to do that. And then For the other truck, I got the upper, these are titanium upper shock mounts. Um, I ordered a lot of titanium over the last few days, so there's going to be a lot of titanium in it. Um, then I got clips for both vehicles, and these are just body clips. I'll put the tethers on so that I don't lose them. I have a problem with losing those um, I don't know if I showed you this this is the battery box or the receiver box that'll be in the show truck pretty nice um, I got lower shock pins for show truck and then I've got a bag of screws now I usually use, it's actually called RC Screws, I think. And I've never purchased, this is K&K, &K, and I've never purchased K&K. &K. Probably because the screw ones come in a little plastic box, and this one just comes in a bag. Me being me. But if you look through here, he has everything labeled. Every screw has a label and tells you what it's for. I mean, that's, that is just awesome. So this is K&K, and these are for the armor. Armor? Ugh. Arma. Uh, Fitz Italian, Typhoon, Sentin, Creighton, and Outcast. This is for the 6S, 8 scale. So, pretty cool setup here. Tells you the sizes, 16 millimeter. Anyway, so even if it's in a baggie, um, I like the label. That's awesome. So that's for the show truck. Um, that's about it so oh no yeah. so sorry for the noise right next to the camera I got wheels and tires now I don't know which one I'm going to put on which vehicle but let's compare real quick And these are belted as well, so they have a um, belt inside of them. It keeps them from ballooning, um, which is great. Something you definitely need on this truck with that motor. So these are the Badlands. Let's see. Let me grab the other one. I think the other one's a lot bigger. All right, so here we go. Um, move the camera just a bit. All right. So here we have the Badlands. Here we have uh, the Trencher. Both are Proline. 
Both are belted. These have a little heavier sidewall. Um, but if you look at the width, they look a ton wider. Yeah, they were definitely wider, so. I think the wheels are the exact same. So, yeah, so these don't overhang the wheel. These do on both sides. So, where this wheel is kind of flat, and you can see this tire, and I'm saying wheel, I mean tire. Tire is kind of flat here, tire's got a big bump there. So, that's why they're bigger. Um,. So, I think, I think these are going to go on the basher, because I think these are basher tires. I don't know, these are cool too, though. Big dilemma here, guys. This is not something I can just come up with an answer to real quick. I used to work in um, the automotive industry, and one of the places I worked at uh, manufactured automobile belts, like fan belts and supercharger belts and stuff like that. And I can tell you that this little piece that's on this tire is from the vulcanizing process and should have been removed. Like it was on the rest of the tire. I know you could care less, but anyway. So yeah, I think these are gonna go on this build. I mean they look great. They're tall. Hmm. Yeah, so uh these were gonna go on the show truck anyway, um originally. Cause this was just going to be one build a fully built truck um, so these will go on the show truck these are going to go on the go truck I like these a lot better yeah these are nice that's what's going to go on this truck right here so uh, today, um, I'm going to put these on, show you guys how to do it, because it is a little tricky on this vehicle. Uh, and then, off camera, I'll, I'll put the centers and the wheels, which takes a while, so I, that's why I'll do it off camera. Um, and then I'll probably come back, say, in this video, and show you how those look on the basher. What do you think, guys? That's cool. All right. So we're going to do this, or at least on one wheel. Uh, depends on how fast I can do it. These are off Amazon. Um, they're generic. But um, they seem really nice all right so there's all four of those and let's check them out yeah so these comparatively speaking are much longer all aluminum these are really nice and if these I don't know about these pins if these pins work 
I mean, I spent a lot of money on the aluminum ones uh, for the show truck, but these might be the way to go. So here's show trucks. If we compare, they're going to be a little longer because I think these are plus 13 and these are plus 20, so they're going to be longer. So let's compare. I mean, obviously, the JBI RC are bigger and thicker. But these are still good. Still good for the price, for sure. All right, so let's get started. So, first thing we gotta do is remove the wheel nut. You can see how good that's gonna look on there. Almost a perfect match. Very cool. So, to remove the stock one, there is a 2.5 millimeter grub screw inside this holding it together, holding the pin tight. So you have to get in there and release it. You can leave it in there. You don't have to pull it out, but you have to get it loose enough to where you can poke out well maybe um, poke out the pen pull the pen out and then this comes right off. So that's the original with the pin. The grub screw is inside this tube and what it does is as you tighten it, it hits the pin. And that keeps it on the truck. So let's try to figure this out. I really like for this to be up and down. There we go. So it looks like this hole. I think it came with two different size pens. Let's see. Oh man, the pens are too big. So the pens are too big for the hole, so you're not gonna be able to use. Well, no, there we go. Okay, this is messed up. They got the pens all mixed up. So these two won't fit. These two do fit. I bet you this one fits. I don't know about the rest. That one fits. So they did send four that fit. And they sent four that don't fit. Yeah, but they weren't, they didn't have them separated right in the bags. They had two and two of each. Oh, that's weird. All right, so we think we need to use this hole. So let's see if we can get that on. Come on now, guys. There we go. So 
so there's that. Let's see. Is it a two? Ah, oh, see, this is nice. So it's got his own screw on there, and that is perfect. Perfect. Tighten that up. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and tighten the grub screw up. Might as well, right? Have double protection. Double protection, no slop. That is beautiful. Very cool. Um, let me put the big pins back up. I'll probably just throw these away. Here, I'll save them. I'm sure they fit some vehicle. You never know, I might buy a vehicle that takes them. That's why I keep all my parts. I have no idea what I'm going to do next, but I know that if I keep the parts, I have parts to work with. So let's move on to the front here. Um, Make sure I get the right hole, this one right here. Friend's gonna be a pain in the butt for me. You can still see it, yeah. All right, so this goes through. I know you can't see it, I apologize. This is awesome. I mean, this is exactly what you want. I know the others don't have this, so. That's a big plus for me. There we go. 
All right, so there's that side. Pretty impressed for Amazon parts, but that threaded pin is key. Um, nobody else has that, so I'm sure there are somebody. Somebody's got it, but I, these were like, I don't know, 25 bucks or so. I don't know. A little expensive, but still, solid aluminum, CNC, true anodized, threaded pins. You can't ask for more. And then you get your caps. So after these are installed, all I need are my shocks, whenever they're going to show up. They're supposed to be today, so if they show up today, that would be great. Just need my shocks, and I need my servo. So my servo um, is not available yet, so I just kind of got to wait. For the servo, everything else will be done um, except the servo. That's pretty disappointing, I know, but um, it's a brand, it's a new servo that's coming out, uh, and there was an issue. The supplier actually put the wrong cord on it, so it was shorter. Um, and to this servo is also going to be used for drones, so. You have to have the longer cord, I guess, for a drone. So. so that's what we're waiting on for the supplier to repair the servos and get them over here. Uh, I'm going to have two of them, one for each truck. Since I can't do four-wheel steer. I'm sure I could, but eh, I don't know that I want to put that effort into this. <laughs> Maybe later when we're bored sometime. Um... Honestly, all I have to do is take this, buy a front end, put it on the rear. I'd have to make my own servo location or bracket. But it could be done. It could definitely be done. But I'm not going to think about that right now. You guys see my cord? I put these plugs on. These are the monster plugs that I called QS8. They're just massive. And then I got it going to my two. Um, what are they called? I can't remember. XT90s or I don't remember. EC5s, something like that. Anyway, so. All my 4S batteries have these connections. So I'll use two 4S. Then if I ever get a 6S battery or something bigger than a 4, I will put this connector on it so it can just connect straight in. So um, pretty happy with that. Um, I got motor fans coming for this. And I got a motor fan or an ESC fan coming. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out a lot of stuff. But should be cool. Haha, <laughs> get it? Should be cool. I'm so funny.
kind of need this up there, but it's not going. So let's just see if we can mount it. Fronts are definitely the hardest. Right in. Beauty food. Not to beat a dead horse, but these pins that screw in are just the smartest thing. And other vehicles have it, it's just this one doesn't. Well, I'm having a problem getting this one started. Or if it's not lined up, not hitting the hole. Very done. Got one more to do. Put the pin out. We'll put the pin over there since we don't need them anymore. Use them as backups on the other belt. These are trash, so those are going to trash. This is the last one, guys. I hope watching me, you, you get how you take these apart and stuff. The biggest thing is that grub screw. A lot of people get messed up because they don't realize that the grub screw's in there and they can't figure out how to get the pin out. Uh, and then they just start tearing stuff up. Not on purpose, obviously, but. This one is being a butt too. Well, I guess this is why you don't buy Amazon shit. Well, every 
body stranded. So all I'm doing is running this one through a die to try and get threads right. And it does seem like there is an issue with the threads, so. Man, it just doesn't want to start correctly at all. Some of these smaller screws you can definitely get the threads in them by just holding them apart in your hand. Now let's hope this fixes it. If not, we're going to have to run a tap. charm all right guys we did it so what's this tell you this tells you <clears throat> that you always have to be prepared you always have to have the right tools for in case things don't go the way you want them to Since I have my tap and die set, I was able to repair the problem. And now that is tight.
beautiful. And you see using this wrench, nothing gets scuffed or scratched. So that's why you get you one of these. Uh, again, this is an AN fitting wrench for cars, real cars. Um, usually for fuel rail connections and fuel line connections. They're those red and blue connectors that you'll see on some race cars. So um, that's what this is for, but it works for this. So we now have tapped, I'm sorry, have used die set to fix a problem. So these, the dies, all you have to do is run your screw in there. So if you have a screw that's cross-threaded or messed up from the factory like this one was, you run it through the correct size, and then that's how you clean up the threads, get all the junk off of it before you try it, and then it should go right in. But... If it doesn't go right in, you have taps. Let me turn, I use this one, yeah, all right. So I had to use these on my, um, uh, here we go. I had to use both my taps and dies, so this ball that screws into the arm, the threads were junk on it, and the th threads were junk on this. So I had to use this and the, the die to solve my problem. And so what you do with this is when you have a screw hole that's messed up, you run this down in and it cuts your threads to what it's supposed to be and then take it out. And then your threads inside should be um, what you need them to be based on which um, tool you're using. So you got to make sure you're using the right one, obviously. That's the biggest thing, I guess. But yeah, so that, those are taps. You got them in all sizes. I don't know if you can see all the way back here, but big ones. Um, so anytime you have a screw hole that's messed up, um, in aluminum, in plastic, um, some steel, like these pins were steel, um, you have to be careful that you're not destroying your taps and dies, um, but any softer metal, uh, these can be used on. So, that's the tap and die. If you want to know, I bought these off Amazon too. Difference being these work perfectly. Oh, there we go. So this is what I bought. 41 piece metric ratcheting tap and die set. They're so good, the sticker doesn't want to be on the box. Yeah, so there's 100-piece sets, 1,000-piece sets, all this crap. But as long as you have... This one starts at 3, uh, M3. So it's not going to work on the smaller trucks. But you can get some that have M2 up. Um, but anyway... I chose this one because it's ratcheting and the tools looked really good. Uh, the others kind of look junky, so I was kind of afraid of those. Um, so that's why I got that kit. So yeah, after I tapped and dyed these, they went together perfectly. And uh, these are set to go. All right, last thing we got to put on our nuts here. And again, today um, I'm going to stop the video and then I'm going to come back and do a short video showing the wheels and tires on.
So there. We did a good job today, guys. These look great. Put the wheels out 13 millimeters further. It's going to be a beast. All right. So I'm done with this for now. Next is this. for the new truck body that's coming. These are the screws. I love the big bag. It's like a popcorn bag or something. I always love getting these in the mail. Big old bags of wheels and tires. I'm going to get these set up. I'll show you what I gotta do. And then I'll do it. Oh, the noise, these bags are very loud. And they stink, stink, stink. Alright, we got our two bags of screws. We got our Oh, so these didn't come on the other ones. Oh, I guess they did. But you got wheel extensions here. You can either go flat or you can go extended. Obviously, we are going to go extended. Because why not? All right? The wider the better, unless you're trying to crawl through a hoop or something. Definitely on a bash truck, a little extra width doesn't hurt. Sorry, I'm just cutting it off. All right, so these other parts will go in a storage container for if I ever need them. Or if ever, I some reason need these to be further in. I can always change it in the future. I can tell you it's a pain in the butt, but, but, but. Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. There's a reason. It's just because your buddy says to do it. You well, know, screw him. That's a pain in the ass for no reason. Oh. Hope everybody's got some good weather by then. We've got a wintry mix this morning, so not so great here. That's all right, I'm gonna be in here building wheels and tires. So this locks into the back. It doesn't stay there, but it there's a position that it has to be in. Uh, so it's fully seated. And then you gotta put eight screws in. And I'm gonna tell you this, it is a pain in the butt. So I'm going to get out my auto electric screwdriver and do this. Because look at the, th the threads are so tight. This takes forever. And if you have to do eight per wheel, I mean, I can handle doing bead locks on little on one inch, 1.3 inch wheels. But on these bastards, you, you get arm pump. 
um, just on one screw. They're so long and the material sucks. I'll be there someday. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop the video now and we will come back to these being completed and we'll put them on the truck. All right, guys. See you soon. All right, we're back. That didn't take very long. It took about, I don't know, five minutes total. Uh, so now I need to re take off the wheel nuts that I put on a little bit ago. So these nuts come with rubber bands in them and they don't they don't stand a chance so the rubber bands are just to keep it secure but unfortunately they do not work and they do not stay in place There's a rubber band. It's broke. So, they will just have to be held on with friction <clears throat> instead of rubber bands. I mean, every one of these rubber bands are just destroyed, so. No, it's broke. All right, one more to take off, and then we'll get the wheels out here. Here are my tool. Trying to blow out this O-ring. All right. So, let's take this body off for just a second. I get the cord to stay in here. is not clipped in but I just want everybody to see what it's going to look like with the big wheels and tires on it. So here we go. The first wheel and tire ever put on the basher. One on, no slop, not loose at all. So far, the truck looks beautiful. I'm gonna throw one on here in the back. Don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not. I'll try. Let's just put it on. It pops on. You get your wrench. It's a 17 millimeter wrench. You can get these all over Amazon, eBay, any RC shop probably has one as well. This one is very high quality. Um, 
you guys know I don't like buying junk. Uh, so, let me see, this one's got four bolts holding the top on. It's all CNC to aluminum. So you don't tear up stuff. All right, we got two wheels on. Let's rotate this bad boy around. And please remember, it doesn't have shocks on it, so it's not going to be sitting at this right height that it's going to look like it's sitting at which is slammed on the ground, which is pretty cool looking, I'll be honest. All right, so, do this again. can't get it on camera but you guys get the idea this is the easy part um, everybody knows how to put a wheel on so it's not that big a deal it's always the same well some most of the time last but not least we got the right front Make sure you get it all the way on. That's the only thing you can worry about, really. Just getting that wheel set all the way down on that. Alright, so... So you can see it. Um. Like a good height. There we go. She's a beast. It's hard to get her on camera. But there she is. In her glory. Okay, so we're waiting on the shocks. Um, and then this one will be ready to tune. So, we'll get it tuned up. So we can start bashing with this guy. And then, we will start the Creighton show truck. Because uh, it hadn't started yet. I got some stuff pre-assembled. Um, but uh, I'm waiting on all the chassis to show up. So I'm going to decide which chassis I want to use first. And then when I break a chassis, I'll throw a different one on this. Um, and then we'll have the show truck. Also, I've been looking for ramps uh, locally. And so I'm going to get a big-ass ramp that we can launch off of and do uh, 
multiple backflips. Um, so that'll be fun. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get that set up soon. I mean, the weather's got to be good, obviously. Um, the colder it is outside, the more likely you are to break plastic. Which is fine, because everything I break, I'm going to replace with aluminum. Uh, but for now, this is it. I kind of want to get slammed on the ground. What do you think? Pretty baller. All right, guys. Um, that's it for today. And I will see you next time on the Pissed Rhino Show, where we will start talking about the shocks for this and start talking about the show truck build. So, stay tuned. There's always more interesting, crazy shit coming on the Pissed Rhino Show. Thanks, everybody, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Goodbye.